Welcome everyone to Beyond the Big Bang. Today we are going to be reacting to Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> There are some strong opinions about Neil deGrasse Tyson within the physics community. Yeah. So what what are your opinions, guys? On whom? On Neil... On whom? I'll tell you what, when I was a kid, I loved Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was one of the people that got me into physics. He made physics so cool. But now that I'm older, I still respect the guy a lot. But he says some things sometimes that are rather questionable. Such as? He likes to overhype things a lot. He likes to go for the spooky. When really physics doesn't always have to be so spooky, you know? Okay. Dungeon, what's your opinion? Did you watch Neil deGrasse Tyson when you were a child? No, we do, it's not. he's not famous in India and I don't know much about him. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, what's your take? Having met him, he is... You met him? 100%. Yeah, they're friends. Where? They met on Grinder. Uh, Grindr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is pretty awesome. Is he as nice in person as he seems? 100%. And super loud. Like, his voice dominates the room. But uh, he does pedal the mainstream a lot. Because I remember at the time he was just like, oh, the Bicep 2 experiment. Like a new discovery. And then it later was t turned out to be just like garbage. And it's okay. But I like Neil. De I like NDT. I think he's done a lot of good for science outreach, though. Oh, 100%. Like, I have a lot of issue with physicists who bash people like Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, Bill Nye being like, they're not even real scientists. So that being said, we're gonna react to a video that I found online. Man, NDT doesn't look any different. And it's like 30 years ago. Do I believe in UFO or extraterrestrial visitors? <laughs> I'm not authorized to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> The quick wit of NDT. I'm gonna rehash what we talked about on the panel last week. We debated global warming. Two of the people did not believe in it. Oh no, one person didn't believe it. Two of them didn't believe in evolution. Uh, <laughs> you know, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. You see, that's the... <laughs> Pretty true, pretty true. Pretty true, pretty true. That right there is a tagline that flat earthers love to use against him. Again though, what people don't what people don't realize is that science is a self-correcting process. It's allowed to be wrong because it'll correct itself. And it's a convergent phenomena. You slowly converge, you iteratively converge upon the truth. All right, well. One of the things I love about science. Police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it back cause I'm brown. Yeah. It's heat, it's picante. Mm-hmm is very I don't get this. Yeah, this video is stupid as well. Yeah, Gunjan, why'd you pick this one? You picked it, Hannah. I think you must realize that some people are gonna go to your show at the planetarium and they're gonna say, aha, those scientists have discovered God because God, dark matter, is what holds this universe together. Look at his fucking face. <laughs> Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Can we analyze how dumb that statement was? That is the dumbest statement I've ever heard in my life. Does any religion any ever posit that God is literally holding the universe? Well, in some philosophy, that could be true. But is he physically holding? I don't know. Who knows? If God is the creator of everything in the universe, then God is physically holding everything in the universe together, right? I mean, these are arguments I don't really care about. I'm just saying, like, it's a pretty stupid statement. I don't disagree. It's just that people may think this. Yeah, people may think this, and that's why it's important for us to say how dumb of a statement it is. To step into his turtleneck. What if... <laughs> you, you get to say the world is flat, because we live in a country that guarantees your free speech, but it's not a country that guarantees that anything you say is correct. Well, that's every country. You ask him if he had a, a rap name, you'd ask me if I had a, a rap name. <laughs> oh. you have a rap name? A MC Squared. That's a good name. How about you are about to be executed? Oh, I'm about to be executed. You have nothing. Except your knowledge, your knowledge of science, your experience. I would request that my body in death be buried, not cremated. 
so that the energy content contained within it gets returned to the earth so that flora and fauna can dine upon it just as I have dined upon flora and fauna throughout my life. This is exactly what I said. Like, this is, like, the proper way to die. I agree. That's what I want. The proper way to die is what? To just be buried naked in the ground. Like, why do you need to be in a box? You're just going to decompose and then your body's wasted. There's so much energy here that can be fed upon. Maybe not for you, Alex, because you're so dead inside that... <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I flinch? Because the laws of science differ fundamentally from those of <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Just look at the history of everybody no, no. doing big projects, and it's never driven by exploration. It's never driven by science. It's never driven <laughs> that by... That is Gollum people. next to him. <laughs> it's driven by the fact that people don't want to... Gollum do from Lord of the Rings is next to me. No, no, no. My precious is... See? Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Um, it's called Star Talk. Is math related to science? <laughs> Most people who could be born will never be born, will never even exist. So the fact like that- Like sperm. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Well, then it's science. The rest don't. But where do they go? They're dead. I had to invent integral and differential calculus to determine this. Then he turned 26. Oh, the Newton. Then he turned 26. Still a virgin. <laughs> That's the guy is good. You know, this like you can't argue with Isaac Newton. And I, that becomes you got a badass over here. I don't know how There was an incident in Pasadena, California. I was there. I don't drink much coffee. I, I don't have a relationship with caffeine. But every now and then I'll be delighted to have a nice cup of hot cocoa. And then I went to one of these coffee houses, you know, with the chalkboard out front. And so I had you know the kind I'm talking about. They're all over Brooklyn. You trip on the chalkboards in Brooklyn. <laughs> so so I'm in there, I order hot chocolate. And I order it with whipped cream, of course, right? Oh, not this. And it comes to the table, and there's no whipped cream. And I said, I ordered this with whipped cream. And they said, oh, we put it on. And I said, well, where is it? Oh, he said, it's sunk to the bottom. <laughs> I then said, <laughs> Either the laws of physics that apply everywhere in the universe are suspended in your coffee shop, <laughs> or you didn't put whipped cream on my hot cocoa. And he looked indignant. Really? <laughs> now, to his credit, rather than continue to argue with me, he intended to prove me wrong. Whoa. So he went into the kitchen, brought out the, the whipped cream, scooped it up, popped it in my, in my hot cocoa, and it bobbed once and floated atop. <laughs> and there it was. <laughs> did you of invite course him? whipped cream, did you no, the of course whipped cream has to float. <laughs> because first of all, before it was whipped cream, it was cream, okay? <laughs> and old timers remember, what does cream do in unhomogenized milk? It floats to the top and you skim off the cream, leaving behind skim milk, okay? This is how that works. Now yeah, of course. You take the My mother does it today. <laughs> and then whip it, putting air into it. <laughs> it is not gonna sink on any known liquid devised by man, okay? <laughs> so... <laughs> this is how science works. One researcher comes up with a result, and that is not the truth. No, no. A scientific emergent truth is not the result of any one experiment. What has to happen is somebody else has to verify it. Preferably a competitor. Preferably someone who doesn't want you to be correct. Such as my waiter. <laughs> he went out to prove me wrong and got the same result that I had declared. We can call that the beginnings of an emergent truth about whipped cream. 
<laughs> now we need someone to do it in Asia and in Europe. And, 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 and then you get a trend, and you can then declare that a consensus of observation and experiments has emerged in the scientific community. Whipped cream floats on hot chocolate. <laughs> Yeah, that's an interesting point because I would say, and I went to a, a seminar on this once, that science isn't really set up. Like, you're not really motivated as a scientist to reproduce results. Yeah, like Alex's group when they're closed source code. Oh my God, what the hell, man? Oh, oh man, that sounds like wow. a really bad thing, man. Like, I would just quit this PhD and start a new one where they make everything open source. There's something coming out called trustworthy science. Yeah, and Alex, why are you doing Does untrustworthy Alex do trustworthy science? I bet you have that little statement on papers that says, like, code available upon request. That email is his hotmail and he doesn't look at it. Oh, man, Alex still has a hotmail. Yeah, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mistake number one. Okay, guys, just to let you know, even Trevor's group's code were not public before the discovery of gravitational waves, just saying. It's still not. It's still not public. Okay. <laughs> the LIGO uh, pipeline is not public? If I could ask you, if there was one thing you wanted people to remember that you could say about science, what would that be? That the universe is knowable and what one need not appeal to mystical, magical forces to account for things. Even That's not if a true. day arises where something unfolds in front of your eyes that you cannot explain, just because you cannot explain it does not mean it is being driven by mystical, magical forces. It just means it's being driven by laws of physics that we know and you have yet to learn or that we have all yet to discover. The universe is knowable and that's an amazing thing. It's knowable by our feeble human brain. That was a lot of words. Why, why did you disagree with that, G-Man? Because, I mean, we give, uh, I mean, mystical... Like, wouldn't you say string theory is in some sense? No, forget string theory. I mean, just observe things like dark matter. We don't really understand sure, it. Sure, yeah. We, we do give it like a... We give our ignorance a name, right? Like, so... But I don't think that's what he's talking about. What is he talking about then? I think he's talking about, like, the known things are not mystical, magical forces, whereas maybe they are, like... Of course they are. That our whole understanding of physics is not some mystical... Like, to ask someone to believe in the standard cosmology that we started from this and then we inflated from a mystical inflaton field like you're asking someone to believe in a lot of things i mean the big bang happened for example that's pretty mystical let's let's be honest about it i mean to me it's mystical maybe to neil degrasse tyson it's obvious like it's have to happen like of course but like to me like why does it happen it's completely mystical to me i'm not gonna say god made it happen but it's still mystery like why are we here i mean if you think about it we are on a ball of rock going around a ball of gas. Hit us with an outro. Yeah, overall feelings. Trevor, you haven't chimed in much. What, do you, what are your overall thoughts of Neil deGrasse Tyson? Definitely having met him. I like him, but I'll just reiterate. I think he peddles the mainstream a lot and you don't really get to hear too many unique ideas from him, but he is a great speaker, 100% great speaker. Gunjan, what about you? So I did not see NDT when I was young because uh, we didn't have internet. And I mean, there were other popular science shows on the television, which I watched, and that's what got me interested. Mostly, I also read a lot of books and watched Discovery. For me, that's what got me interested into science rather than uh, a particular person, perhaps. Although I did read a brief history of time and that got me interested into physics, perhaps. Yeah. So my opinion about Neil, De Neil deGrasse Tyson is that like if, if he did motivate you guys to go into science, he indeed did a good job because you are into science now. Also, it's not easy to motivate science. I mean, I'm sure like he meets a lot of dumb people every day or like regularly. So it, it can get pretty boring. I mean, it must be a lot of work, man. Man, you're saying this, but we're doing the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but like... He's, he doesn't have to make podcasts himself, okay? He doesn't have to find an editor and stuff. Let's be honest. Yeah, I know. We're working harder, actually. <laughs> like, we do triple the work of Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm gonna say my final two cents about Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's, he's a total legend, and I love him, and I would love to meet him someday. But I do disagree with him sometimes, and that's okay. I don't think he would mind you disagreeing with him either, so it's fine. I think I agree completely with, with Alex. I owe a lot of my current self to him. He really changed my life, to be honest. 
He really changed your life. He literally changed my life. Like just, I, I, I would not have gone into physics. Like my life would have been completely different had I not. And you didn't go into physics because of him. You went into physics, you went into biology because of him. Didn't you go into life science? <laughs> I went into life science, but the, the moment I realized I was not supposed to be in life science. So three things got me into science. And I won. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next time, science people. Bye bye. Science people. Bye 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 bye. 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 Three, two, two, one. One. Science. science. Okay, okay. Tirath, starting now. Starting now. <laughs> now. You, <laughs> I, I mean, done this now. At least ten times. <laughs> now. Hannah Fro, the science pro. Han, Han, Han. Trevor, can you tilt your camera down slightly so we see more of you? Oh. Okay. Oh, I want to see more, Trevor. Okay. Show us more. <laughs> Should I give you some nipple too? Like... Yeah, can you take your shirt off? <laughs> she said, I've been to the year 3000. Not much has changed when it is underwater. And your great, great, great granddaughter is pretty fine.